On the internet, there are many opinions about anime. Some people like this, some people like that, and there aren't many opinions out there that truly bother me. Except one, and maybe that other one as well where people call me a lollicon, and that one where people assume my waifu is Ritosaka. It's Saber, goddammit! If you're an anime fan on the internet, and you like Neon Genesis Evangelion like myself, chances are you've seen people say Shinji Ikari is just a, and I quote, annoying and poorly written. Probably many more names than that, feel free to mention any in the comments if I miss some. So with that being said, get in the goddamn robot, don't run away, and let's talk about why the hate for Shinji Ikari is wrong. That sounded like an act man intro. One of the complaints leveled against Shinji is that he is constantly running away, not ever getting in the goddamn robot and saving the human race. He just complains. Well, you'd be surprised from how many times he does get in the mech. Yeah, sure, he doesn't get in automatically most times, but he goes through inner turmoil in order to develop his character. Every single time he is ordered to get into the mech, it's a huge thing for Shinji. He does it because he was told to, because at that current point in the show, whatever example you'd like to use, Shinji hasn't learned how to think for himself yet. Why? Well, because Shinji does everything he is told to because he thinks he will be loved if he did, and in turn, be useful to those people that he himself loves. This is a flaw in Shinji's character. He's a people pleaser. And not only that, but Shinji is not okay mentally anyways. He's depressed and he tries to escape his reality in any way he can. One of those examples is him constantly listening to music in his free time. And one of those ways is to simply do what others tell him, so he doesn't have to think for himself. This, in turn, frees him of the burden of choice and the pain of being a man, if I'm able to quote Samuel Johnson. Or to quote a song as well, like Cheap Trick, Shinji wants you to want him, but he also needs you to need him. I think we get this confused with Shinji literally running away and just becoming whiny and useless. In reality, Shinji never runs away, even at the end of the series. He comes back and pilots the Ava unit. And that's because maybe he'll find acceptance from others. It's really as simple as that. Sure, you could say him running away from his problems, mentally speaking, is what makes him annoying, but then I would ask you this. What would be the point of the show without his mental anguish? Because that's the point of the show. It's, it's about Shinji's road to acceptance of himself. It's just a completely shallow criticism of the character and the show to boil it down to just he's annoying. I guess what I'm really trying to say, and this is something not everyone will notice, but is that Shinji Ikari is just simply misunderstood. His journey through Neon Genesis Evangelion and the end of Evangelion isn't simply just one where what you see is what you get. There was a lot of buildup, writing, and depth there that I think people sometimes willingly ignore because they don't like Evangelion subjectively speaking. And the reason for that may lie in the director just being that good at writing this character because, in a way, the viewer is kind of supposed to hate Shinji Ikari. So, wait a moment. See tactics, you're trying to convince us not to hate him, then you're saying we should hate him? Well, not exactly. You should hate Shinji, but only because he doesn't do everything in his power to help himself. As a viewer, you should feel somewhat repulsed, angry, or mad at Shinji and his actions. For a majority of the show, he fails to make the right decisions, and because of that, the audience can get fed up with that and end up never giving Shinji a shot again. But this is intentional by the direction of the show and how it's written. The characters themselves hate Shinji, and it's all because he never thinks or acts for himself. He wants to do the right thing so badly. He wants to be happy and to make others happy, but the way he goes about doing it is completely wrong. Love and acceptance does not come from others until it actually comes from within. You have to love who you are, then you can search for acceptance from others. This is Shinji's biggest flaw, and yet it's his most human and realistic flaw that we all have at some point or another. Have you, yourself, ever people please? Have you ever faked it until you made it? Have you ever just wanted to be loved and would sacrifice a lot of yourself to be with that man or woman? This really is Shinji's conflict in a nutshell. He's just a person who hasn't found that confident. He hasn't been pushed in the right direction yet. He's lost. But I should move on to my third point, so let's for the sake of argument take Shinji Ikari out of the series. And this is now real life. But in his place is now you, the viewer, and myself I guess. That's right, you have self-inserted yourself into this series. So I ask, 
how would you react in your shoes? And before you answer, I think it's important to take into account what I've said. So basically, you have to pilot a mech that is inhabited by the spirit of your dead mother, which also basically requires you to drown to be able to pilot the damn thing, first of all. Your family is in shambles, your mother is dead, your father hates you, oh yeah, and you are solely responsible for saving the entire human race from the literal fucking apocalypse from literal fucking angels. So honestly, ask yourself, is Shinji Ikari annoying because he cracks under the pressure of these things? I guarantee you, 100% of you watching right now, if you were in this situation, you probably wouldn't be the hero of the day. You would not get to have this great harem of girls, and there is no celebration at the end. You're estranged from your family, and live with a stranger who is a terrible person and an alcoholic. You are the only way to stop the apocalypse from happening. Don't you think you'd crack from that immense stress? Food for thought. I'd also like to list some episodes for people to go back and watch in case they want to give it another shot to see Shinji's dilemmas and how he developed as a character throughout the series and really good examples of why I think Shinji Ikari is really misunderstood. They'll be on the screen, of course. They'll also be in the description as well if you want to go and check there. The first one that I have is Hedgehog's Dilemma, which I believe is one of the best episodes in the series and there's a lot of really good episodes, but I feel this one is one of the best because because this is an episode where Shinji runs away and this pretty much addresses what I think all of the really bad criticisms for Ava are. This shows how great and how layered of a character Shinji is and also shows off some of the side characters and even Misato's side where she's coming from. It is a really good episode and I definitely think you need to check it out. The next episode is episode 12 which is just a really damn good episode as well and this features a really nice scene that at the end Gendo finally gives words of praise to Shinji to which Shinji realizes that much of his motivation for piloting is to receive that fatherly praise from him and it's a very heartbreaking episode in a sense and especially taking into account what happens later on in the story but it is a really good episode and once again shows off Shinji's character as to why I believe he is really good. Another one is episode 19 introjection which I'm not going to say much about about this episode in the way of spoilers but I will say this this shows Shinji under pressure and why he doesn't run away and why he's always there to help support this cause of the war against the angels it's a really good episode and honestly it's just a really another good example the next episode is episode 26 take care of yourself and this is the culmination of Shinji's arc this is him realizing everything that he's needed to realize throughout the series Series. And of course, it's easy to say this is one of the best examples just for the simple fact that it addresses a lot of people's criticisms for Shinji Ikari in this episode. Also, visually, it's so inventive and entertaining that it's pretty easy to guess why this episode is so memorable and to this day, one of the most, I guess, memed episodes in anime. And then finally, the end of Evangelion, which kind of just reiterates everything, but the end of Evangelion is a lot to take. In. It will take multiple watches, but it's a highlight of, I think, Shinji's character and what he went through. It's a good ending to the show, that's for sure. And that's my list. Just typing with one hand here, and I'm in the mood for some Evangelion. Some OG Evangelion. Let's see, here we go. The disc fell out. The disc is original, so... Oh, you gotta be kidding! Shinji Ikari is not a bad character. You may not like his character, and that's totally fine. You may find him annoying or any other multitude of things in this anime annoying. You may hate his shirt, the fact he isn't a self-insert protag, or that he just isn't banging Masato all the time. And that's weird. There is a large age difference there. But whatever qualms you have with Shinji Ikari that boil down to, he's whiny, why doesn't he just get in the damn robot, is a really bad criticism and only proves you never really paid attention to what Evangelion really is at the heart of it all. It's about a 14 year old kid shoved into a situation where he just can't win, he can only lose. It's about him accepting his role as the potential savior of planet Earth at just the age of 14, which to remind you is the age where kids are in middle school. Shinji Ikari is simply not capable of fully understanding what he even has to do and the gravity of what this all even means. And honestly, if you had a gun to your head and were forced to pick one of these two things, this is kind of 
of ultimatum, so it's a little wobbly of an argument, but stick with me. Do you want yet another character that gets the girl at the end, has a perfect, sugar-coated life filled with romance, is extremely gifted in just about everything he does, and can at the end of the day brute force himself into winning like Kirito from SAO? Or do you want a character who has depth? that's well-written and shows the human side of a predicament or situation. It's an ultimatum, and the answer is up to you. So before you say Shinji Ikari is a bad character, realize not every anime protagonist has to be perfect. There is room for characters like Shinji Ikari, who is to this day, in my opinion, one of the greatest and most well-written characters in all of anime history. If you're new to this series, I know it just came out on Netflix, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, ring the bell, put down in the comments what are your thoughts on Shinji Ikari and your thoughts on Evangelion. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Bye bye